OK, now we know what, the, what makes a star stable is how the pressure and volume vary, in particular value gamma here, the constant. We can now apply this to white dwarfs and see, are they really stable? Now, if you remember, uh, back when we were first deducing how a white dwarf could exist, we showed that if you have electrons bouncing backward and forward in a box, the pressure they exert is proportional to the number of electrons times the typical velocity times their typical momentum. Now, normally momentum is written as P, but I'm going to write it as M here, just so it's not confused with pressure. And we also know that the momentum is proportional to the number of electrons to the one third. If you have more electrons, they're all squashed into a, that's a number per unit volume, I should say, not just a number. If you have more electrons in a given volume, they're more squashed, therefore from the uncertainty principle, they must have more momentum. Now, in our original calculation, we then use the relationship that momentum equals uh, mass, too many m's here, I'll call it a big M, the mass of an electron times the velocity. So we end up that velocity is proportional to 1, proportional to the momentum. So the pressure is going to be proportional to the number times the momentum times the momentum, so that's momentum squared. Momentum is proportional to number to the number density to the one third. So that's going to be proportional to number times number to the one third squared. So that's number to the two thirds. It's going to be proportional to the number density, the number of electrons per unit volume, to the three thirds plus two thirds, so five thirds. Now how is this related to what we've talked about here? Well, the number, if you have a fixed number of electrons, then the number per unit volume is going to just be proportional to 1 over the volume. So what this is telling us is that for a white dwarf, P V to the 5 thirds is a constant. Uh, just to go through that again, we've got N is proportional to 1 over V, so you've got P proportional to 1 over v to the 5 thirds. So you bring the v up there and you come up with this. Now, if you remember, our criteria for stability was that this index gamma be more than 4 thirds, and 5 thirds is more than 4 thirds. So that's telling us that a white dwarf is stable. If you squash it, the pressure increases by more than the gravity, pushes back out, and it all stays where it is. Otherwise, white dwarfs couldn't exist. OK, so what's the whole deal about these things not being able to survive at a large mass? Well, in doing this calculation, the crucial assumption we made is that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Now, we used that to work out that velocity is proportional to the momentum. That is true if things are going much less than the speed of light. But if you calculate the speed, you find that in white dwarfs, especially as they get smaller and smaller, they actually get closer and closer to the speed of light. The electrons have to move close to the speed of light. And in that case, well, they can't go, the speed can't increase without limit. If the momentum gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this, the momentum can get as big as you like because it's got a Gower factor in relativity, but the velocity can't get bigger than the speed of light. So once you're close to the speed of light, instead of having V proportional to M, V is just going to be a constant. It's going to be roughly the speed of light. So let's fold that approximation in here. This is all a very approximate calculation, but hopefully it gives us the key ideas. So in this case, the pressure is going to be proportional to the number per unit volume times the speed of light, which is just a constant, times the momentum. So we're just after the proportionality here, so that gives us... Um, momentum is proportional to n to the one third, so that's n times n to the one third, so that's n to the four thirds. 
basically what's happening here is once things are getting close to the speed of light, their momentum can keep on increasing. So each time one of them bounces off the wall, it can still apply a pretty hefty force, and the force continues. But we also had to multiply by the number of electrons that hit per second. And that was just given by velocity times time, because anything within that distance would hit the surface in one second. But as the velocity can't get back in the speed of light, that puts a natural limit. Like you can, if this is more than the speed of light times one second away, it can't hit there in that second, no matter how much momentum it's got. So that means that once you're getting close to the speed of light, the pressure, instead of going up strongly, it goes up rather more weakly as the number of density goes down. So this is right on the edge of stability, which means it's unstable, as we discussed. So that's telling us that when you get close to the speed of light, White dwarfs are no longer, that is to say, when the electron gets close to the speed of light, white dwarfs are no longer stable, and they can then collapse quite happily. Chandrasekhar did this calculation in a rather more sophisticated form and was able to show exactly what this mass is. He had to add up all the quantum mechanics properly and work out the motions and the pressure and balance it all out. But it turned out that for a mass of the star, that exceeds roughly 1.44 solar masses. If the mass of a white dwarf is bigger than that, then it's unstable. As the mass gets closer and closer to this limit, the white dwarf gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and the electrons start moving faster and faster and faster to compensate. And when you're getting down to this sort of mass, with a very tiny size, the electrons are starting to move so close to the speed of light that instead of having p proportional to n to the 5 thirds, you hit up against the speed of light limit and have it proportional to the 4 thirds, at which point it's unstable. And then if it keeps collapsing any more, there's nothing to stop it, because as it gets smaller and smaller, gravity increases every bit as fast as the pressure. So it should keep on shrinking. And that is the Chandrasekhar limit.